Hello and welcome to another episode of From the Beginning here on Heavenward Thinking. Today we're continuing on in the book of Exodus. We're going to be looking at Exodus chapter 17 verses 8 through 16, going through the end of the chapter, talking about the defeat of the Amalekites. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with a staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning, but whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with a sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, Because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. So we see multiple different things here in this passage. Again, we see the Israelites are being called toward the promised land, and we're seeing here that the Lord is continuing to be with his people. He's going before them. He is fighting for them. And we see here that Moses gives Joshua instructions, and Joshua does it. He tells Joshua that he is going to be standing on the top of the hill with the staff of God in his hands. And we see that Joshua is fighting. Whenever Moses' hands are lifted up, they're winning. Whenever he lowers his hands, when he gets tired, uh, assuming that, the Amalekites started to win and the Israelites started to lose. And so we see here the, this constant idea when we're, we're picturing this story of when his hands are up, they're winning, and then immediately as soon as they lower, they're, they're losing. And we get that great visual here. So we see what, uh, what Joshua uh, was doing. He was winning when Moses' hands were up, losing when they were down. And then we see what Moses had help from Aaron and her here. So Joshua was following the instructions Moses gave him. Moses was then getting aid from Aaron and her, and they helped prop up his hands so that he wouldn't drop them because as, as soon as, again, he dropped them, they were losing. And we see this idea of support and how important it, uh, it is for us as Christians to have support in our lives. We, we see that here with Moses when he had the support of these other leaders helping him as he was the 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 leader here of the Israelites, when he had support from other leadership, he was able to do what God was calling him to do, and therefore the Israelites were able to win. But when he didn't have that support, he wasn't able to do it. And we see how important it is for us as Christians not to just do things on our own without help. Sometimes the Lord calls us to something and doesn't call other people to do it, and we have to step out in faith and do something. But a lot of the time, the Lord is calling us to do something, and he'll send some aid along the way. We just have to be receptive of that aid here like Moses was. He could have been like, no guys, I'm the leader. I'm going to do this. I'm going to raise my hands and I want the glory or the honor for myself. But instead he allowed them to help and they were willing to help and aid him in this. And so it's important for us as Christians to realize there's times in our lives where we need to be like Moses, where we receive the aid. We do what God's calling us to do and we accept the help of other people who come along. Sometimes we have to be like Aaron and her, where we see someone leading, God's doing amazing things through them. We recognize that and then we recognize that they need help. If God has called us to help them, then we respond out of that calling and we help so that we're not leaving people high and dry. Too many times in the, the world of Christianity, we have Christian leaders who get burnt out and they fail because there's no one to help them. They're, they're trying to do everything on their own. They're not willing to take aid or people aren't willing to help them. And we see how that goes. But in this story, we see what happens when the Lord puts the right people in the right places at the right time to help each other to succeed and to do what he's called them to do. And we see that they were able to be victorious. It says Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. And we see that that happens right after there's this aid for Moses. But then we don't just see that in the story. We also see the Lord speaking to Moses. He tells him to write on a scroll something to be remembered. He's going to blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Again, we see that the Lord the God of Israel here in this story, he is the one true God, that there's no other God like him. There's no other king like him. He is above all kings and he can bring down people, kingdoms, empires. He can bring down whoever he wants and he's 
choosing to use this little situation here, the, the just a couple verses here at the end, to remind the people who he is, what he's going to do. And this is going to serve as a reminder over time of what the Lord is doing as he eventually blots out the name of Amalek completely from under heaven. And we see that the Lord, when he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And so we know that this is, is not just a one-time verse. This is something that he is going to fulfill later on. So we're going to look towards that as we keep going from the beginning throughout the Old Testament and New Testament. Then we see that, that Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. Again, he is recognizing who his God is, giving him the honor, the glory, and the credit for that. And then says, Because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. So again, he hears what the Lord is telling him. He acts upon it, builds an altar to the Lord, gives God the glory and the praise, and then believes that the Lord is going to do what he is going to do. And so he makes a powerful declaration. Again, this is something that's important in our own lives when the Lord tells us he's going to do something, we should have the confidence and the faith that he is really going to do what he says he's going to do. And so we are able to declare that God is faithful. When he says something, he's going to do it. And that's really our, our ultimate encouragement here and challenge from this passage that when the Lord it says he's going to do something, he really truly is going to do it. And we can have faith and confidence, just like Moses did here, where we can give God the glory, Give him the praise and declare that he is going to do what he says he's going to do. As always, join us next time for another episode of From the Beginning here on Heavenward Thinking.